So William, are you still celebrating the Apollo anniversary by being a space cadet? Judy, the moon is closer than you think. We'll tell you more next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. And you know, Judy, the moon really is much closer than you think because we are here at the Capitol in Salem and right behind us is a Douglas fir who in 1971, the seeds were taken to the moon and then when brought back, they were planted. So we're looking at a 40 some year old tree right here that has actually been to the moon. And you know, anytime that you're down in Salem, you can come right to the state capitol grounds and see this tree. Right now it's behind some chain link fence because they're doing some construction, but you can still see the wonderful tree. But coming up on the show today from planet Earth, we are gonna show you two different events happening that include wine, cheese, and art. And also coming up, we'll be showing you how to deal with some outdoor pests. But first, some indoor plants. Well, Garden Time loves coming out to Little Prince of Oregon. I'm with Joan, and Joan, you always have something interesting, but really, we know you for other plants than what's out here today. Right, we're known for our hardy plants, ground covers, problem solvers, succulents right, like right. this. Oh, look at these, these are gorgeous. And we are introducing a line of indoor plants. Some Ooh. people might call them their plant babies, Plant Parenthood. It's <laughs> so popular now, that hashtag Plant Parenthood. Right. So many cool ideas mm -hmm. on that Instagram account there. Yeah, so uh, we have some terrarium examples that are really popular. We have some open terrariums and some closed terrariums. And on our uh, Facebook and Instagram, you can see we have done some polls to see which ones are the favorites. Well, fun, <laughs> fun, and always giving ideas to us because we can copy these ideas, which is so great. Sure, of course, please do. <laughs> and really, you're gonna give us some ideas. These are a wonderful collection, so we're gonna go a little bit more in depth about mm -hmm. some of these, so tell us about these. These all do really well in closed terrariums, okay. like this. Uh, succulents like this you'd want to put in an open terrarium. They do not do well in a closed environment. These plants in particular don't like so much moisture. Oh, okay. uh, these house plants though, they really like uh, high humidity and a contained terrarium like this gives you a really high humidity environment that they're really happy in. All right, and I love this one, this begonia. Wow. Yeah, Rex begonias. We have s several different varieties. This one in particular is festive celebration. Pretty. Uh, lots of different colors and textures really fun. And then I see so many different ferns. I mean, I know ferns, but man, I, it's hard pressed to say this is a fern. Right, this is a Hartley fern and look at heart-shaped foliage, so cute. We posted this on our Facebook, got lots of compliments and I people wanted to know what it was. And look at this one. That's the antenna fern. It almost <laughs> looks like two different plants put together. Right? And different colors. Look at that silver and green on mm -hmm. that. It's such a delicate um, frond. Nice variegation on that. And what are these two down front that look like they're so flat growing? Those are selaginellas, uh, and those do really well in a closed terrarium. They really like high humidity, although in Oregon here, they are hardy outside if, they, if you give them enough moisture and enough shade. Uh, and I think it would be a nice ground cover outdoors, but like a ground cover for a terrarium would be kind of cool. Really pretty, really pretty. In our closed terrariums here, we have some what's called baby tears, oh. uh, which is another low grower, uh, but a selaginella would pop right in there just as easily and if you find a plant like this don't be afraid to just rip it in half right oh I'm just gonna go out. crazy like an animal right here <laughs> rip this puppy in half don't be afraid to get really down and dirty with your terrarium right because it's a small space so you have to make the plant small to fit exactly and your terrarium is always going to be growing people think that you've planted it and that's it it's always going to be growing don't be afraid to prune that is a great idea because it does it's going to be like any other kind of small t um, container right wonderful wonderful and we have to talk about these two plants really quickly this one that's saxifraga stolonifera 
strawberry geranium. That's also, that can go outside in Oregon. That will do well, but it's a great house plant. And it's like little spider, one of my favorite plants, one of my first plants, it gets like little baby plants, just like spider plants. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. So cute. And then this one. That is the bird's nest fern. Beautiful. Also does really well in a terrarium. Something that's gonna get bigger like that, you might just wanna only put one plant in the terrarium. That's Ooh. nice too. Sure. Like in this one in particular, we just have the begonia and that's it. And so Joan, everybody loves to find these plants. So where can we find them? You can find them at your local garden center. That's always your best choice. But we have a website, littleprinceplants.com. And if you're looking for inspiration, always follow us on our Facebook and our Instagram. Uh, and you know, that's what Joan's job is. And she's giving us inspiration, plants to copy, plants to get for our own home. So please go to Garden Time and we'll click you over to all those places and get some Little Prince plants for your place. Thanks so much. Thank you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Why do the finest builders shop at Standard TV and Appliance? The key for us is having a great salesperson, somebody that knows their appliances, knows what they do, and when the clients are expressing how they live in the home, can take that and elaborate and turn it into something that they have a kitchen of their dreams that they want to cook in, they want to be there, they want to show it off. And we get that by using Standard. Standard can make your dream kitchen a reality, setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and Appliance. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Right now we have fresh picked or pick your own berries ready in our fields. Here's what we have to offer this week. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. Well, just think about taking a summer trip out to out in the garden nursery and see Carol Westergreen at her wonderful nursery and learn about other plants. And so what should we be planting this time of year? Well, this time of the year, there's lots of wonderful ornamental grasses and companions, things that are just summer and late or late into fall bloomers. They're just easy and wonderful and bright. Uh, and you have a great selection. And so I see alliums here, but not really alliums. Yeah, well, these are actually another allium. There's kind of two classes of alliums, the big bulbs you see in the spring, like the onions. And then these are more like chives. They're an actual herbaceous perennial with a root ball. Um, I've got several different varieties. They're actually quite long blooming, quite drought tolerant. So, and they look beautiful with a lot of these other summer bloomers. Yeah, and with these grasses are blooming already, yes. and really it's only late July. Yes. So what's this one? That one is Budalia Blonde Ambition. Cool. Uh, Look and at it's that. it's wonderful. We noticed the spring as we were cleaning them up in March, there were still nice looking flowers. I mean, they were still in shape months later. So for winter interest, it's fabulous as well. I mean, from now through next spring, it's right, really, right. really beautiful. So wait till like March to take them down? I would, I mean, it's, they're still looking good. If you get some interest out of them, leave them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this one's pretty, it's already got some red on it. Yeah, that's one of the panicums. So they're tall and thin. That one's about a three foot grower and it uh, does color up really nice and it starts earlier. That color's gonna get better and better as we go through the season. So yeah, they start in July and by September, they're almost completely burgundy. And this is hot rod. That one's hot rod, yes. Nice, nice. And then the fuzzy ones are fun. The fuzzy ones, those are a couple of my favorites. Those are penicetums. This is Carly Rose and this is Oriental. You can see there's a little flower color, a little bit of height different. Um, they're a couple of the earliest really showy ones to bloom. They usually start about mid-June and they'll actually last till fall. Sometimes when a hot summer, oh. they'll kind of hold for a little bit. The flowers will hold and then we get some rain and cooler weather and they get a whole nother flesh of fall colors or fall flowers. Wow, and then I like variegation and this one really is beautiful even before it blooms. Yes, that's one of my favorite grasses and I think it's really underused because it's so easy. 
the more I grow it, I, the more I like it. It's actually quite drought tolerant. It's a Molina variegata. Um, has a really pretty flower head on it. The only downside is it doesn't have a lot of winter interest, but it's so beautiful through the, mm. through the season. It's cool season. It starts really early, and you get lots and lots of time and interest with it. Wonderful. And then some tall sedums. There's a couple. Actually, we have a mix of sedums. So the one in the back is Class Act, which is tall. It's about the same size and shape as Autumn, um, Autumn Joy, but it's, you can see it's a little, it's got a darker flower, a little darker foliage. It's very, very nice. And then this is Hot Stuff and this Cute. is Dynamite and they both have nice pink flowers. Um, they're shorter. They're going to be around a foot. Ah. So they're not nice tight, nice. but they also, you can see they're coloring up now, you know, so they're going to be August through October color on them. And even for containers, which yes, is nice. Yes, they'd be very, very nice. And then some taller flowers. Yes, yeah, so this is a Hellenium. This is the first time I've grown them. This is Mardi Gras. It's been blooming for at least six weeks already. Wow. I cut some of the old flowers off, but I see tons of new ones coming. They look beautiful with the grasses. Orange is not always my favorite thing, but I mean, it even looks nice with this pink, with the reds. Right. It's really a nice contrast. Plus it, it's just a nice texture contrast as well as color. Uh, and now this looks shorter than the one, the yeah. Rudbecki that we usually see. Yeah, What's this that? Is, this is little Goldstrom, and, or Gold Star actually, but it's like, it's a dwarf yeah, Goldstrom. Right. Everything about it's smaller, it's shorter, the flowers are smaller, it's just starting to bloom and it's absolutely packed with buds. It's going to be about 15 inches versus 24 to 30. Wow, wow. And then some other ones go in there? So this is um, Little Lemon Solidago. It's a um, goldenrod, but it's only about 18 inches. You can see it's just coming into bloom. It often does repeat bloom, especially if you deadhead a little bit. You can see there's little buds coming. So you get a really long midsummer to fall bloom on it. Again, it looks beautiful with the grasses. Nice. And I see you have some beverages there. So why do we have beverages with all these beautiful plants? <laughs> well, this weekend is our eighth annual wine and cheese in the garden from noon to five on Sunday. We have wine vendors, a cider vendor. Oh. Um, we have cheese vendors. We have fo various food vendors, um, some crafts, and it's an opportunity to live <laughs> blues music to go shopping for plants. <laughs> and really, it's a beautiful place to come. They have this unbelievable display garden, and it's such a great event, and you can shop to bring plants home to your own garden. So please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website out in the garden nursery, and you get all those details so come out tomorrow and have a great time. Thanks so much, Carol. Thanks for coming. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. What's even better than buying a brand new Subaru? How about getting the best possible value from a place that's as trustworthy and dependable as a Subaru? At Capital Subaru, your satisfaction is our goal, which is why you can always expect the kind of service and selection that keeps you smiling. From our lot to your driveway. Summer's here and so are the deals. Hurry in now and lease the safe and adventurous new 2019 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium, just $2.29 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in historic Silverton. 400-year-old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden. Spend a day leisurely strolling the garden or attend one of many garden events or classes. You can even extend your stay with a night at the Oregon Garden Resort. Enjoy the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Enjoy food, wine, music, and craft vendors at our Wine and Cheese in the Garden event. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. So I'm delighted to be standing here with Rick Naylor and have a visual scaping. And Rick, we, you know, one of the things that I've enjoyed about working with you over time is you always tend to have uh, clients who you come out, you do some great work, and then you continue. They'll, you'll go back and they'll add some more. And they'll, so it's, a, it's kind of like a work in progress. And I appreciate that about your, you and your company. So we are back here. We have filmed at this garden before. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. It's stunning. Yeah. But you've done, you've come back and there's some things that you've, changed and worked on, so let's just jump right into what those are. Well, what we've done is, uh, the two main things that we did was, Barb and Connie had a real issue with getting up and down the slope, 
over here. Because it was um, just a really steep slope. A very slope. steep slope, okay. right. And it wasn't very comfortable and it wasn't very safe to walk on. So what we did is we created these switchbacks to where you can easily get a wheelbarrow up there, easy, easy access to the bank. And it's a good way, if you have a really steep bank, to create a much easier access and a much safer access. Because then you can actually, you can do gardening there as well as you go up. It's, it's more attainable. Absolutely, you. absolutely, Wonderful. absolutely. And a lot easier to run a wheelbarrow up there. Right, now. right, right, indeed. Yeah. And then I, I uh, hear that you also did this beautiful kind of a waterfall thing. What, what was wrong with the first one? What was happening there? Well, there was very little water sound. I mean, it was just kind of a trickle and, and the homeowner was never really happy with it. Right. So I said, let's rip the old one out, put a new one in. We'll have a lot bigger waterfalls, create a more natural look, and give you this, the sound that you need for noise abatement. And just when you're out in the yard, you can have the sound of the running water, which makes you, you know, it, it, it relaxes you and it kind of calms your... It really does. Your, and what I like about it is it's not just, it's not just one little you know, waterfall flow. There's, there's like three, three or four in this here alone. Right. And the sound actually sounds like you're at, at a river listening right. to it flow over the, the rocks. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's kind of what a water feature is for. So. Right, right, right indeed. And so then you've also, though, done some other things. Why don't we take a walk over to another location and talk about what you've done there, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, Rick, now we are in a place that, that used to be slate mm -hmm. in this, right? Correct. So you remove that, you put in the new one. What else did you do here? Well, the biggest part? thing we did was the wall was over here. The wall and that's so behind us? The wall that's behind oh, okay. us, right. Well, well, this is a new wall we put in. It was a rock wall that was sitting here. Okay. And, you know, I said, Barb, it kind of blocks you off from the rest of the yard, which kind of defeats the purpose. So let's move that wall back here right. so it opens it up to the water feature and the rest of the garden so that you can take in the whole thing. Because it's right. such a beautiful garden. I mean, It it's, really is. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. She's done such a fantastic job with it. And, you know, you want to be able to see it. And so anything that's in the way, we got to remove so that you can have... And she's got so many different seating areas that we can see from different viewpoints of the yard that, um, you know, in, in the, all the years I've been doing this, is probably the, the, the nicest yard that I've ever been involved with. Well, and it is nice because I can see how even the, I can hear the water feature over here now mm -hmm. very clearly. Absolutely. So it really opens up not only sight, but sound to right. look at and see the whole garden, which is lovely. Absolutely. And you get, you get, a, to get a totally different perspective right, right. on the garden from here than you do over in the, the other seating area. And then you also added yet another new seating area, didn't right. you? And some hey. pathways to it. Yes, we did. So then do you, do you think that this, this is done now? Is this yard completed or do you think there's still possibilities for the future? I think it's completed, but, but with Barb, you know, it's always a work in progress and she's, she spends so much time working on her yard that who knows, I know that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to tackle the front yard right. and do some things there. So, um, you know, she, she does such a fantastic job and really all I am is just a conduit to try to help her with uh, some of the other things. Right, so. right. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, now if you're interested, whether it's in hardscape, whether it's in amazing plant material, whether it's in water features, all you have to do is go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to the website and you can have Rick come out, maybe create that beautiful garden in your own space. Rick, always a pleasure, my friend. Always. Thank you. <laughs>so i am standing here in a garden with derek of alpha sense and um, derek you know we're, we're talking about ways to trap specific insects today and i i see that there's a red tint up here yes what is this one for and what does it do this is a, a trap it's called delta trap it's a deltoid shape i'm gonna remove it and it's for codling moth and it can actually catch more pest of apples and pears and it has again sticky insert in it with and the there's one right there one. and there's one there but this is not a codimon that's different species that's called leaf roller but again it has a species specific pheromone it will attract the male in this case codling moth uh -huh. and it's either indication of the infestation which you clearly can see I don't have right right or, or the, the, the level of infestation, and which in backyard situation, you can really remove the codling moth from your from Completely your trees. from that area. Yes, and have 
uh, really edible apples. Wonderful, wonderful. So then we also have something else we're going to discuss, but before I tell them what that is, let's go to a different location, okay? All right. Okay, Derek. Now, I know that, that you know, being on Garden Time, we have heard a lot of talk about stink bugs, and you have some information about them. So let's start with this yellow card. What do I do with that? Oh, it's just sticky cards that you can hang underneath the porch light. Just like that? Yeah, that uh, later in the summer, not right, now. They right. will not come. They're probably starting uh, end of July, uh, beginning of August. And those stink bugs will be attracted to the light in the evening when you turn the light like 8.30 in, in the evening right. until 10.30 at night. On this porch, I, I used to catch 20 stink bugs wow. uh, per evening. And you can, you can put it up there anyway. You can staple it, you can use straight pins, whatever yes. gets it up there. Mm -hmm. All it needs to be is up there when the lights are on and then they bing, exactly. right there and stick. Yes. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Yes. And then what are you holding? What's that about? It's, it's again, different alternative for the sting bugs. We can use it with the pheromones or without. The pheromones can help in, in capturing them. But if you put the strong light behind it or just hang it above your garden, this trap is sticky on both sides. Oh. So the sting bugs don't see it very well and they go boom. They'll and fly right. And they're not known for their vision. No, right? no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they would, either way they come at it. And then I would assume if you, could you do something with a light again around that to even make it more powerful? Very strong light and the, high, the highest point you can hang it, that the better. Uh, about seven feet above the ground or wow. eight feet, it's the best because they like to go up. So they fly upward more yes, so. Yes, yes. And the strong light, the, the stronger last light, the best. Well, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to me how you, can, how you can find ways that really don't have anything to do with chemicals at all to attract insects, to even, first of all, say if you have them or not. That's right. And then to really trap them, which will be death to them eventually anyway. Yeah, and this is especially for the invasive sting bug, the brown mar marmorated right, sting bug right. that, you know, is bothering us. Well, you know, I know that a lot of us gardeners really do want our gardens to be insect free. Well, at least the ones we don't like, you know, like ladybugs. So for more information and to get all the stuff you need to get to help make your garden as safe as it can be for you and your family and your vegetables, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to AlphaSense website. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you, William. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. Nothing is more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis, and your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farms. Bring your garden indoors and learn basic floral design principles at our floral design class. Learn about when and how to cut and condition your flowers. Each participant will take home an arrangement of their own creation. To learn more about the garden, get directions, or learn about garden events, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. Well, I'm out here at the wonderful Garland Nursery, and I'm here for the Garland Nursery's annual Art and Wine in the Garden event, right? Yes. And Brenda, this is the 20th yes, year it is. for this. Wow, it seems like time is flying past. How, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So let's jump in with you about, you know, it says uh, art. 
So what kind of art is going to be here? What kind of people and, and events? Sure. Well, we think of art a lot of times as paintings and prints that you can hang on the wall. And there will be right. some of those uh, distressed ink um, prints, all sorts of different things like that. But there's other things as well. Um, everything from handwoven baskets, pottery, metal, metal garden art, um, repurposed pieces for art in the garden, um, unique straw hats. Wow. Um, lots of jewelry, but different kinds, um, and glass mosaics. Well, you know, also. The, the, the glass mosaics, is, mm -hmm. is that stuff like the candles? So, no. So, the Recandle Company will be here, right. and she does um, really cool, uh, she and her husband do really cool lights um, made out of liquor bottles and, and wine bottles. We had them on the show, didn't mm -hmm. we? We and sure did. Now they've even got some new stuff coming Yes, they out. do. Wonderful, Yes, wonderful. very, very attractive. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned the glass mosaic. Scale Girl has been off and on with us for quite a number of years as well, and um, sh her stuff is really cool. Um, Kathy's uh, garden art does the rusted um, pieces made out of uh, like chainsaw chains wow. and metal and and let's be honest some of these pieces you, you've actually bought and used in I your have, own home garden. I <laughs> have. I brought some up today to show you and earrings too. I really love um, her design. Lovely. Uh, necessary indulgences. She does some great things with copper and wonderful. different things. Yeah. So, so I have certainly plenty of, of wonderful things to absolutely. visit, see, and purchase while absolutely. you're here. Absolutely. So now why don't we turn over to your brother Lee okay. here. And Lee, we're going to talk to you about, because there's always music, there's food, and of course wine. So let's jump into that. Yeah, the wine is part of the name right. in the event, it's right? It's right in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use my cheat sheet, otherwise I'm not going to remember when you know, there is and, no shame in and that. who. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So yeah, we do have food trucks. We have two of them, and they are here from 11 to 4 both days. We've got Kiko's Barbecue, and we've got the Spotlight Food Truck. We also have an ice cream truck, Woo. which will be fantastic Wonderful. on a nice, perfectly warm day. Warm day. Yeah. They'll be here from 11 to 3. Um, we also have wine, which is part of the name. So we have three different wineries that do fantastic wines. We have Blue Bill, Bur Bluebird Hill Winery. See, have you, have, have you been tasting already, <laughs> no, I haven't had any yet, no. <laughs> we've got Cardwell Hill Cellars, and we've got Andante Vineyards. Nice, nice indeed. Now, as far as the music goes, there, there's going to be a couple of bands here, because this is happening both days. We have a band each day. Yeah, nice. And the, the bands are here from 12 to 3. Um, We've got Saturday, we've got the Dead Band, which is a great full dead cover band. Oh, nice, Which nice. Uh, will bring you back to the 60s and right, 70s, right. I think. <laughs> and then uh, on Sunday, we have the Almost True and the Easy Targets. Wonderful. So that'll be fun as well. We also, you know, I didn't mention, but we have spirit tasting too. Oh, really? Yes. Nice, nice. Yeah, we've got uh, Spiritopia and Vivacity Spirits here this year. And, you know, quite frankly, I've gotten to know both of them through coming to this event. Yes. And I absolutely adore both of those companies. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, they are fantastic, definitely. I won't be able to partake, I don't think, until the end of the day, but, you know. Well, you know, I'll step up for you. Thank you. I'll, I'll yeah, do that for do you, just part? to help out. Okay. <laughs> you know, it is, it is 20 years. That's a long time for an event. Clearly, it's a fun event. And if you've never been out here, you should come on, stop by. And, and if you've been out here before, come on back again, listen to the music, interact with wonderful artists, and get some wonderful beverages and food to boot. So both of you, thank you so much for your time, and come on out and enjoy art and wine in the garden. <laughs> William and I want to thank you for watching today's show, and William, where are you going? I'm doing my moonwalk. So for more information about today's show and the moon tree, please go to Gardentime.tv. Thanks for watching, so let's do this again next week right here on Garden Time. Oh, grab me, grab me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>